Hey guys, in this quick tutorial of Dicom Web, I'm going to show you how you can use the Dicom Web interface with Postman. Here on the Dicom standard page, we can see that Dicom Web is the Dicom standard for web based medical imaging. So it's a set of RESTful services which allows you to query for studies. So this is called Guido RS for searching for studies. So this would be kind of the equivalent for CFind. Then you have retrieving DICOM objects with Vado RS. And then you have storing DICOM objects with STO RS. You also have some other services like <coughs> UPS for worklists. The easiest way for testing the DICOM web services and kind of understanding better how, how they work is to have a DICOM server or DICOM archive supporting the DICOM web standard. And a good option for this is the DICOM for G archive 5. So this is an open source DICOM archive or PAX or VNA, whatever you want to call it. And it has very good capabilities. So if you want to install this for testing, check out the link in the video description for my video on inst getting it installed. Before we go to Postman, I'm just going to show you here in the Dicom for g UI that this is actually using the Dicom web interfaces itself when it's accessing the, the backend. So this is not doing a SQL query directly into the database, but instead it's accessing it via the Dicom web standard. So if you press F12, we get the developer options here visible. And if we select the Dicom for G AI title here and press on submit, without any filters, we will see that there is a query being sent. And this query is a Kido RS query into the backend. So here we can also see the the address what it is using. And if we double click here, we, we can see it in the URL bar and we can see the response in the JSON object and also in this raw data format. So currently the DACOM archive has only one patient with one study. And here in the documentation for DICOM, G, DICOM for G Archive Lite, so this is the Archive 5, on the RESTful services, we can see all the services which have been implemented. So for Kido RS, there's GET for patients, GET for studies, series, and so on. And um, also the Water RS queries. And also if you check the DICOM web, uh, standard space page for the resources you can he see here see that for example this studies is the query for studies and there is uh, more documentation on on the standard so for all studies you would put, put slash studies and for series you would do this and so on so you you can kind of flow either or for, for looking at the standard. But then let's just copy this because this is the base URL. And let's open Postman. If you need help installing Postman, check the link in the description. I just did a video on installing Postman. So I already have made uh, a new project here with, with uh, a few queries. So here's a, well, we can kind of go ahead and add a new one. So add request here and, and then we can copy paste this URL. So it's, it's installed in localhost. And again, if you need installation help, check my video in the description. And this is the AI title. And then we have the studies. And then there are some behind the question mark. There are some query parameters. So it's saying include field all and stuff like that. But we can take all of this away and then just trigger the query as is. 
and we will get that same JSON object back, which we previously uh, saw in the browser. And here, if we ch check the raw, uh, here we can see that it actually provides a URL for doing a studies query for 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 the specific study. So we can click here, and it will generate us a new request, and we can query like this as well. And to actually better understand what this query does, we can go back to the documentation here. So for Guido RS, we have a studies query, but then we also have under under Vado RS we have studies, and then when we supply the study UID here, then it's actually a retrieve study transaction. So what what we just did in in Postman is retrieve the study. So we can actually see that returning it took eight hundred fifty seven milliseconds and it was 10 megabytes in size and in here in the raw view we can see that it's in format application document that's the binary data below and, and we can actually see it's in says agfa and so on but uh, since postman is not capable of visualizing uh, a dicom object directly this is um, this is not very interesting here inside Postman, but we can go ahead and then check what are other services what RS can provide. So we for example have a retrieve study thumbnail here. So if we give the study UID and then add slash thumbnail, then we should get the thumbnail. So if we go back to Postman here and add slash thumbnail and press on send, then okay, I had two slashes. That's that's why we got the error. But now we can see that we actually got a thumbnail of the of the study. So if you're seeing thumbnails in a in a Dicom Weaver, most likely it's using this interface to get those. And it's only 2.75 kilobytes, so that's very lightweight. So then there's also an option to add a slash rendered, and we should get a rendered study. So if we go again back to Postman, we can add that. Okay, let's take the double slash away, rendered, and now we're actually getting the study in, in JPEG format and it's 334 kilobytes. So it's actually rendering it in the Dicom archive on, on the back end side and then we get this result here. So if you would want to make a Dicom viewer or maybe not a Dicom viewer or maybe just add capability to add to visualize images somewhere it would be, and it's a browser app it would be very easy to just get it in jpeg format and you don't need to have any real darkum uh, capabilities in the viewer so this is how you can explore what you can do with the darkum web interfaces and um, yeah you can just go ahead and try different um different requests here and, and r read about the requests and I think the service names are quite descriptive that you get an idea of what the capability is and what it's meant for. So uh, if, if you still maybe need help with uploading a study into the Dicom 4G archive I'll just show you that briefly because it's actually it's actually quite easy to do as well. But let's just leave this open so then we can see the Sto RS, like what's what's happening there, because this is using Sto RS to push the study. So here in the studies view we have actions for selections. No sorry, more functions. Here we have upload Dicom object. 
and then select the server to Daikon for G and then just browse for a study and we'll have a NEMA. If you Google for NEMA 97 CD, you will be able to find this. So it has some some studies here. So let's just take take something here and press on open and it's sending those in. So now I chose three diagram objects and I think we will see the transactions here. So what we would expect to see instead of a get we should see a, a post and again slash studies. And if, if we check here we, we see post 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 so we see three post um, transactions here. And if we hover over here we can see that should yeah okay we see Dragon for cheer slash RS slash studies. So it's it's using this the RS to to send and it's it's type Dicom. So now if you go back here again Dicom for G and press on submit, we should see some additional content here. We had one study previously, now we have three studies, so I guess two of the the images were for the same study and and one was yeah okay here we can see that there are two instances in this one and one instance on that one we have had 10.6 megabytes and and now we have 31 megabytes of data stored if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up thanks for watching